Good evening, high school football fans, and welcome to the frenzy. I am Stephanie Farad, and yes, I am missing that big guy that normally stands to my right. Frank is in Morgantown for the Georgia Southern Eagles' first game of the season against West Virginia. We will get to the big guy in just a little bit, but first, a lot of great high school matchups tonight on the gridiron. We had cameras rolling from Savannah to Vidalia and all the places in between, but first, we begin with our game of the week as the Statesboro Blue Devils made their way to Jessup to take on the Wayne County Yellow Jackets. That's where tonight's tailgate tour set up shop as two better programs in the Southeast. Statesboro back on the field after taking a week off. Blue Devils looking for their first win of the year, and it would be uh, Wayne County looking for their second win of the year as they're coming off of a win. It would be heavenly night in Jessup for the Wayne County Yellow Jacket fans. Statesboro on a third down. Cole Leggett with nowhere to go as the Jackets swarm to the ball. Next drive, another third and short. Tupac Lanier. Welcome to sports everyone. Frank has the night off, but the Georgia Southern Eagles are back to work as they prepare to welcome their first non-conference FBS opponent to Paulson Stadium. Saturday, the Eagles were shut out by the West Virginia Mountaineers. The scoreless game was something that hadn't happened to Southern in 242 games. Today in Statesboro, Georgia Southern will look to regroup as they prepare for Saturday's game against Western Michigan. And Saturday, former Wayne County standout Grayson Lambert made his first start with the Georgia Bulldogs. The Virginia transfer was 8 for 12 with 141 yards and two touchdowns in Georgia's 51 to 14 win over ULM. He has, of course, had plenty of core of help from running back Nick Chubb, who was in midseason form, running for 120 yards and two touchdowns on just 16 carries. Finally tonight, the Atlanta Braves will start a three game series against the Philadelphia Phillies in what some are calling the battle for the basement as both teams are sitting at the bottom of the NL East with a combined record of one and 19 in the last 20 games. The Atlanta Braves are currently one game above the last place Phillies in the division and will look to end their 12 game losing streak tonight. Atlanta is averaging 213 in the last 12 games with an 8.14 ERA. And to make matters worse, the Braves have just won two games on the road since July 8th. Game is set for 7.05 if you dare to watch Ooh, it. Oh, that's Battle a snoozer. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, if you're a hardcore Braves fan, you know, win, lose, you got to be a fan. And how about True. the dogs? 69 to nothing. Those are scores I yeah. get on my PlayStation when yeah, I play. You know? Sit it down, Dominic Allen. You got you love to see local kids like that go to the next level and, and have success. So we're we're cheering for the sophomore. All right, All right. definitely. Welcome to sports, everyone. The wait is officially over. Now you can spend your entire weekend watching football with the NFL kicking off their first Sunday of the season. The Atlanta Falcons will have to wait one more day as they play the Eagles on Monday Night Football. This afternoon, the Jacksonville Jaguars look to turn things around with the help of second year quarterback Blake Bortles. The Jags taking on the Panthers. Second quarter of this one, 3-3 game. Cam Newton dropping back is going to throw a seven yard strike to Jericho Cotri and that makes it a 10 to 3 ball game. Still in the second quarter, Blake Bortles. He would look sharp in the first half of this game. The one yard touchdown pass to Rashad Green here makes it a 10 to 9 ball game. Now remember they backed up the extra point try, a 33 yard try now. This one is going to be no good. Jason Myers misses the extra point so we stay 10 9. Third quarter, Blake Bortles back and this one is going to be intercepted by Josh Norman. He returns at 30 yards for the touchdown, 17 to 9 Panthers. Fourth quarter, 20 to 9 now. Bortles again is going to be picked off after his arm gets hit here. And it's going to be Thomas Davis who recovers. The Panthers go on to win this one, 20 to 9, the final. The high school football season is in full swing, and this week WJCL set up shop in Guyton for the Battle of Effingham County. The tailgate tour stopped at South Effingham Friday for the rivalry game between the South Effingham Mustangs and the Effingham County Rebels. This one would be a close one. The Rebels would get on the board first, but it would be the Mustangs that would block a late field goal and go on to beat the Rebels 17-14. It was the first time since 2011 South Effingham won against their biggest rival. Next week, the tailgate tour will roll into Bluffton as the Bobcats are set to take on the Whale Branch Warriors Friday, September 18th. 
Well, all is well in Statesboro as the Georgia Southern Eagles bounce back nicely against Western Michigan Saturday. The Eagles beat the Broncos 43 to 17 at Paulson Stadium. Here's a look at all the action. A week after being shut out by West Virginia, the Georgia Southern offense proved they still have what it takes. The offensive line helped the Eagles run for 413 yards and five touchdowns in Saturday's win. Leading the way was sophomore Matt Breida, who racked up 176 yards and four touchdowns on the ground. Um, the offensive line, they did a great job. Um, I think they needed experience last week of what happened, you know, just to get them more experience on the field. They did a great job opening up the holes tonight and just overall blocking. And the uh, wide receivers and quarterbacks also did a really good job blocking. The defense also showing up Saturday, holding the Broncos to just 25 yards rushing and getting their first safety in five years. Senior Antonio Glover had a big night, getting three interceptions in the game, with two of them leading to 10 points for the Eagles. He also racked up seven tackles. Call and call would be effort. Effort. Every play. 11 men around the ball. Every, every chance you get, every opportunity we have, everybody wants to make the play. And thanks to having great teammates like those guys, Antoine William and Matt Dobson and Jay Ellison and corner, cornerbacks like uh, Darius White and Caleb Williams, it, it's always a great opportunity. It was the first time Georgia Southern hosted a non-conference FBS team to Paulson Stadium, and head coach Willie Fritz couldn't be happier with the way the Eagles showed up under the lights in Statesboro. So this is a huge win. They played in the bowl game last year. This is big for our conference, Sunbelt versus the MAC, and, and I'm just proud of the guys and them being able to respond uh, this week and, uh, you know, just, just play, uh, bring their A game to. I thought we did a lot of great things on offense, rushed for over 400 yards, which is hard to do, uh, played really well defensively, and then made a bunch of big kick plays in the kicking game. So great job by the Eagles. Is what the Sun Belt Conference looks like. Believe it or not, the Georgia State Panthers are sitting at the top of the conference after they beat New Mexico State by two points in the only conference matchup so far this season. There are eight teams that are one and one so far, including the Georgia Southern Eagles, and three teams still haven't picked up a win. Taking a look at how the other teams fared this weekend, the Georgia Bulldogs beat Vanderbilt in Nashville. Nick Chubb had 189 yards in the 31 to 14 win. Georgia Tech handled Tulane, beating them 65 to 10. The Yellow Jackets rushed for 439 yards, and South Carolina fell at home to Kentucky. The Wildcats won 26-22, despite the Wildcats scoring just two points in the second half. This is the second straight time Kentucky has beaten the Gamecocks. Well, looking now at the AP Top 25, there are three teams that stay at the top. Ohio State remaining the number one team in the country. Georgia moves up three spots to number seven. Clemson is up one spot to number 11. And the Yellow Jackets also on the move up to number 14. Auburn making the biggest move this week as the Tigers go down 12 spots to number 18 after their close win against Jacksonville State. Well, that's a look at sports. Stick around. We'll be right back.